All right, day four, final day. Are you hyped? I'm hyped. So this is what our pieces look like after they've been drying all night. And as you can see, we've lost the really pretty light red color, but don't worry, that's what dry brushing is for. We'll get that back. Um, also, it doesn't smell nearly as good. It smells very strange. In fact, my entire kit box now smells like that because, you know, my entire armor smells like that. And it is a strange smell, but it is still uh, slightly sweet, um, which smells good. Just smells strange because it's like an almost faux cinnamon. But anyway, before we dry brush, we need to do first coat of our matte spray because we don't want this kit shiny. This kit is not a shiny kit. This is a rusted kit. So shake it up and just more spray painting. Just cover up my face and just spray paint in a little bit more. Just like we've been doing. And they do the same. Again, no like weird globs, but definitely nicely coating it. Um, oops, knock that over. Um, yeah, nicely coating it, especially on the cinnamon stuff because that's what we're trying to seal in. There we go. Maybe a little bit too heavy, but it'll dry. It'll be fine. Because what we're really trying to do here is keeping that um, cinnamon stuff nicely sealed and keep it away because we don't want any of that stuff falling off. We have had a lot of our uh, cinnamon already kind of fall off in places like there and like there and there. Uh, over here we have some in the middle. So. Sometimes they just fall off and that's fine. That's what we kind of just brush them off for. Um, but it is pretty nicely covered. So I actually did a pretty good job with the Mod Podge this time. Um, but yeah, it's all based on how much rust you want. You put on the rust. Sometimes it sticks, sometimes it doesn't. It's just a lack of faith. So when this is dry, which will probably be in about, I don't know, 30 minutes, uh, then we'll come back for dry brushing. So I'll see you then. Welcome back. Dry brushing. We need to take our panels as they are now to this. And so you can see just how much of a difference there is from this rust to this rust in the fact that you can really see the stippling from the rust where this one it kind of hides and blends in all the way. And it is kind of shiny, which I can't really take that away because guess what? It's from metallic gold antique gold to be precise. Um, I tested out a lot of different types of browns uh, when I was originally getting this one to be like this and surprisingly this antique gold was the one that had the best effect to get that kind of the yellow tone of it and I just went with it. The matte spray paint, the last coat that we do, does help kill some of the shine from it so it's okay. So basically, we're just going to basically cover most of our rust in this, uh, but dry brushing it. If you've never dry brushed something, definitely test it out. What you're going to do is you want a brush that's kind of thicker and stiffer um, because you don't want it to getting everywhere. You're going to want only a little bit of paint like I have it in my dish again. And I'm just going to grab a little bit on it here. It's not too much. I do have a paper towel handy if I need to take even more off of it. And what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to very lightly kind of drag the brush over the surface. Like I'm not putting any pressure at all. And it's just whatever is on top is going to grab some of it. And like your first stroke is going to be darker than anything else. And so... Pull this up just a little bit higher so you can see just the difference in this section compared to the others of that having that little uh, yellow part. So whatever part you first touch is going to get a lot more of the paint because guess what? That has the first pass through. So 
be careful where you put it. I tend to do my like first kind of strokes in like the middle zones or towards the edges. Um, personally, I really like how um, having a really hard or more predominant gold edge is a looks. That's just my personal preference. But again, weathering is however you like it. If it is your kit, you're going to have to wear it, not me. So at a certain point, uh, make sure the kit looks the way you want it to. Um, but if you are going for approval with um, the Mercs or with any of the other costuming groups, be aware of the standards. Talk to your Rusalor, the Ailerads, um, someone from the club, and get to know those standards. Get familiar with them. Stock them, if you will. And just really know them because... You don't want to go through all this work and end up with a costume that you were so wanting to be in this group and then suddenly you can't because that's super frustrating. I know I got denied eight times um, prior to getting approved over the span of, I started in May and I ended up in November. So however many months that is, um, a bunch. Um, but a lot of my kickbacks were for really small stuff like my uh sleeves weren't tight enough my legs weren't tight enough and um my shoulders weren't uh in the right place because I had gotten bad information from someone who wasn't a Rusalor um so don't talk to people who aren't the Rusalor talk to the Rusalor who's the costume guy um and basically really minor things. It, I probably could have gotten approved a lot faster if I had just had someone to help me take photos because a lot of what I was getting hung up with was I fixed the problem in under like a week, but I had to wait almost a month before I had someone who knew how to take photos, take photos of me for another submission. So yeah. So I am going to speed through the rest of this. We'll see where we're at. All right, so that's this piece done. You can see just how little paint I've actually used, like not even a lot. So it doesn't take a lot of paint to dry brush, but the effect is spectacular because just looking at the difference now between these two sets of rust, you can see just how more dynamic this one is compared to this one. You can see all the relief textures Compared to this, you can see like the high points and now the low points. And that's really what dry brushing is about is uh, bringing up uh, the high points and showing those off. So if you were to scratch up your armor and actually make um, scratches into it, like legit scratches, dry brushing will really show that off because 
it shows off that top layer, much like black or brown washing shows off the uh, crevices because the paint goes down into those crevices and then when you wipe it away, you can't wipe out of the crevices. So dry brushing brings out your high points, uh, doing a wash brings out your low points. So I'm going to speed through doing this one and then we will spray paint the last one and then we're so close to being done. Welcome back. We have it spray painted. The spray paint is dry. We are totally done and you can really see just how awesome that final layer of matte uh, spray paint really just uh, settled out that gloss from the paint and just really kicked the uh, rust effect into gear. So I want to thank you for joining me on this journey. If your armor has gotten completed because of this, sweet. Welcome to the team as soon as you get approved, of course, but you know you're already a part of the Mando since you have your armor. Um, but I also wanted to show you guys that this rusting doesn't just need to be on your armor. It can also be on, right over here, on a weapon. So this is Cypress. Um, I'm not going to show you all of her because she has an issue right now and I don't want to like show off her hurt spots. So this is Cypress. Uh, this is uh, her scope, her little cool squiggle thing, um, and that part. And you can see how there is rusting here too. And um, that co ancient copper paint was my base tone for all this. I also used a lot more of the gold in more places too uh, as a base as well in some. And you can see on here I have it running all the way down in places too. So I did not do her nearly as much because, you know, I take good care of my weapon, but you know, sometimes things happen. Um, but yeah. So I just really wanted to thank you guys for joining me and listening to this tutorial um, because, you know, we went from this and we've turned it into what looks like armor. Like it used to be this and now it's that. It's like magic. Um, but thank you for joining me. I hope this helps you. If you have any questions at all, you can ask me, but I really suggest you ask your Rusalors because they're the people who know the costume standards inside and out. And I probably asked them about a million questions, thought I bothered them, and then I asked about a million more. And because of that, that really helped me in my process. And I was able to have only minor fixes when I went into the regionals and, um, local submission processes. So ask a lot of questions, find what works well for you and you know, stay safe during this time. I know it's a pandemic and I know it's a quarantine, so stay home, work on your armor. Have a great day guys.